everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to go over how to answer NCLEX style multiple choice questions. Now in your nursing school classes or whenever you're fixing to take NCLEX, you're going to have to know how to answer these NCLEX style critical thinking questions. And in this video I'm going to give you five strategies on how you can eliminate options and hopefully increase your chances of picking the right response. Because NCLEX questions are not fact-based questions like um, what year did Columbus sell the ocean blue? And you have all these options. They are case scenarios where you have to know patho, farm, all those other type of things and apply it and be smart about how to eliminate choices. And there are some strategies you can use to help you with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each strategy, then we're going to go over a question and I'm going to show you how to eliminate those options based on this specific strategy. So let's get started. Okay, number one false options. A lot of times each response that you're going to have either A, B, C, or D is going to be an actual false statement. It's not even true. So what you need to do is you need to look at each statement and say, is this true or is this false? This is a great way for eliminating wrong options. And let me show you what I mean by this with a sample question. Okay, this question says, a nurse is developing a care plan for a patient who is at risk for developing pneumonia after abdominal surgery. What nursing intervention would be included in the plan of care? A, restrict fluid intake to 1,500 milliliters per day to prevent aspiration. B, educate the patient about the importance of not coughing and deep breathing. C, encourage the patient to use the incentive spirometer device once a day after breakfast or D, encourage ambulation three times per day as tolerated and assist patient to eat meals in their bedside chair. Okay, this is one of those false options. And whenever you look at the question, you're thinking of pneumonia, abdominal surgery. So what is really important with that? So let's eliminate all the false options. Okay, A, restrict fluid intake. No, you would never want to do this with a patient with pneumonia unless the patient was in fluid overload or something like that. And the pa it doesn't tell us that. Because you want the patient to be hydrated. You don't want thick se secretions, which would make pneumonia. So that is false. Okay, B, Educate the patient about the importance of not coughing and deep breathing? No. We want the patient to cough and deep breathe. Even though they have an abdominal surgery, you would teach them how to wound splint. Anytime a patient's had any type of surgery, you always want them to cough and deep breathe, getting those secretions and everything moving. You don't want it stagnant. So that is, okay, C, encourage the patient to use an insemnous barometer device once a day. No, this is false. And you have to think back to how you would teach a patient to use an incentive spirometer. You want them to use this at least one to two hours throughout the day while they're awake for it to work effectively because it helps the patient breathe in and pop those sacks open so you can get all the secretions moving and everything like that. So that is false. And D, our last one, which we know has to be right because that's all the other options, encourage ambulation three times per day as tolerated and have the patient in their chair to eat. This is right because in order to prevent a patient from developing pneumonia after surgery, you want them up and moving, which is getting those lungs moving while they're breathing, you want them up out of the bed, sitting in the chair. So that is the best choice. And this was really, it made it easy because you knew that all those other options were false and you were able to eliminate it to just one. Okay, number two, watch out for those catch-all choices because those are usually the right ones. Okay, what does this mean? This is like an umbrella option. For instance, all of your options will be correct. Every statement will be true. So you'll be like, man, which statement is it? Because there's not a select all, but there's an option out of those options that includes all the options together. And you have to watch out for words like, protocol, activate, initiate, things like that. Because those are some little clues that, hey, this might be one of those questions. And let me show you this great example of a typical catch-all question. 
Okay, let's look at this. A patient with suspected influenza is being admitted to your room from the emergency department. Admitting diagnosis is respiratory failure. Which nursing intervention is most important when providing care to this patient? So we're looking at this as one of those catch-all choices. Chances are all these options are gonna be right, but which option is a combination of all the options in one? So let's look at our options. A, wearing PPE while providing care to the patient. B, doning a face mask upon entering the room. C, maintaining meticulous hand hygiene before and after patient care. Or D, initiating droplet precautions. Okay, let's start eliminating. Well, after reading all that, we know that we have a patient who has influenza. And influenza, per everyone's hospital protocol, requires that you have to wear PPE, you have to don a face mask, and you have to wash your hands. But do you put a patient in who has influenza in droplet or airborne precautions? That's a lot of things. That's one of the things people get confused on. Well, if you look, you would be saying to yourself, okay, which one's right? All these seem right because one, two, and A, B, and C are right. And if you remember that for influenza, you would put a patient in droplet precautions. So droplet precautions would include PPE, putting on a face mask washing your hands really good. So the answer would be D. And see how that is tricky. It's making you think critically and you have to know the information. Okay, number three, prioritize with the nursing process, ABCs or Maslow's hierarchy. This is really important because you know those NCLEX questions love to ask, well, what is the most important thing for you to do as a nurse? What is the priority? And all the options will be something that you would actually do for that patient, but which one is the most important? And that is the answer. So what you wanna do is you wanna start out either using Maslow's hierarchy, which remember, physiological needs is more important than psychological needs. So you would eliminate all the ones that deal with phys um, psychological. And then sometimes you have to use two together. And then you can use your nursing process, okay? Which one is assessing the patient? That's important. So you'll wanna go with that. Or you can use the ABCs. We're looking at airway, breathing, circulation. So that is how you would eliminate those options when they all look great. But which one's the most important thing for you to do? So let me show you another example of how you would do that using the Maslow's hierarchy and the ABCs and the nursing process. Okay, let's look at this example. A 25-year-old female suffered third-degree burns on her face. What nursing diagnosis is highest priority for this patient? Okay, let's look at our options. And remember, we wanna keep in the back of our mind because this is one of those priority questions that we need to be making sure we're thinking of our nursing process, Maslow's hierarchy, or our ABCs. And you will know that patient has third-degree burns on her face. Those are one of the worst burns you can have. And when you have burns on your face, your airway is close to your face, so we know that possibly we could have some airway problems. So let's look and see what's most important. A, risk for nutrition imbalance. B, disturbed body image. C, risk for ineffective airway clearance. Or D, acute pain. Well, all those are nursing diagnosis for this patient. But which one is most important? Okay. Let's use Maslow's hierarchy. Maslow's hierarchy says physiological needs are before psychological needs. So we can immediately get rid of option B because that is a psychological need. Now, A, C, and D, they are all important. Okay, D, okay, let's use our ABCs. Now, D isn't part of our ABCs pain. Yes, we'll need to address that, but that is not our priority right now. Nutrition is important, but that's not our priority. C is very important, because remember, the, one of the key things in this question is burns on her face. Anytime you have any burns up on the face, the torso, anything like that, airway is at risk. So it would be C, risk for ineffective airway clearance. And using Maslow's hierarchy, the nursing process, and ABCs, that really helped us eliminate that one and pick the correct choice. Okay, number four. 
go with the most therapeutic response. We talked about this in how to study for mental health nursing because remember that class is tough because it's always asking you, well, how are you gonna respond to this patient? What are you gonna do? And usually the response you wanna choose is not the right response. So you have to know what are therapeutic responses for you as a nurse. And these are questions that are asking you, the patient says this, how will you respond? And all the options will be quotations of phrases you could say. So you wanna make sure that you very first thing you do is eliminate those non-therapeutic responses. And those is you and those responses are usually like providing the patient with false reassurance, like they're gonna get better, or you're making a judgment, or you completely change the subject, or you ask them why. Never ask in mental health the patient why. And let me show you an example of how to eliminate the options whenever you're trying to use therapeutic responses. Okay, a patient states to you, I wish my family would just let me die. We all have to die sometime or later, some sooner than others. What is the most appropriate response to this patient? Okay, this is one of those, how will you respond to the patient? So remember from what I just said, you'll want to quickly go ahead and eliminate those non-therapeutic responses. And that will help you determine which one's therapeutic and what would be the best. Because usually what's gonna happen on a lecture exam or NCLEX, they're gonna throw out some non-therapeutic responses to you. So we have A, your family wouldn't want you to talk that way. You're gonna get better. We can automatically eliminate this because this is false reassurance and we don't know the patient's gonna get better. So eliminate that one. B, my father said the same thing before he died. This is wrong because you have turned the conversation around on yourself and um, you're telling a patient who likely wants to talk about them. They don't want to hear about your father. So that is definitely non-therapeutic. C, tell me more about your feelings concerning your family. This is the correct answer. And we'll talk about why D is not, but this is the correct answer because this is leaving it open for the patient. You're not asking them a question. You're just, you're making it broad and you're encouraging them to talk about their feelings about what their family is saying and help them explore their feelings instead of making a judgment, false reassurance or anything like that. And D, what about expressing your feelings to your family? This is wrong, even though it's not making a judgment or anything like that, but you're recommending something for the patient to do that he or she probably doesn't want to do. They're just talking to you out of just concern for themselves. So the most appropriate would be C. Okay, number five. Pick age-appropriate responses. In most questions, especially your pediatric questions, they will tell you how old the patient is, like 24 months, five years, 13 years old. And this is a huge clue for you in what options you can eliminate. Because many times, you'll maybe have like a two-year-old and it'll tell, ask you how you're gonna teach the patient. And you can easily just go through and eliminate the ones that are not age appropriate. And let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. A 24 month old is scheduled to have a tonsillectomy. What will you include in your teaching to this child? Okay, this is one of those common NCLEX lecture questions that you'll probably be asked on a test, especially in your pediatrics class. And the biggest thing to tip you off for getting the right answer is the child's age and the age is 24 months. So that's two years. So you'll wanna think back to what the milestones are for a two year old and how they learn best compared to the other children. So let's look at our options. A, describe the procedure as it is about to be performed. B, provide a video and explain in clear terms. C, engage in conversation about the procedure and encourage the child to express his or her thoughts. Or D, use picture books and puppets and repeat explanations. So let's go through these. A, describe the procedure as about to be performed. No, the child, this is a little bit older for maybe a school age child. This is um, a toddler, is not, ready for something like this, you're not gonna describe it as it's about to be performed. This is not age appropriate. B, provide a video and explain in clear terms. No, the child's intellect is not ready for, to understand how a video is explaining it to him and in clear terms. This is definitely not age appropriate. This is probably, again, maybe for the school age child. C, engage in conversation about the procedure and encourage the child to express his or her thoughts. Definitely not, this is more for your teens teenagers, because um, you want to 
engage them, have them talking, express their thoughts because it's really important for the teenager to do that. And D it's, is the best because toddlers or um, preschool children, they learn best by using picture books and puppets. And you have to repeat things to them a lot because they have short term memories and they um, don't process it as clearly as older children. So that is definitely the most age appropriate response, D. Okay, that is how you answer NCLEX style questions. Those are some top five strategies that you can apply to your lecture exams and whenever you're taking NCLEX. Now be sure to check out our other nursing school study videos and thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to this YouTube channel.